today we're going to build on what we've done previously with tangents and we're going to find the perimeters of circumscribed polygons right polygons that go around circles now let's just take a quick look at what we're trying to do so here's it's a typical problem we're trying to find ij right ij is this segment right here basically from where the tip is to right where it touches the uh, circle right so this is our question now we know some things I he see there's a length here there there's all these different lengths but I need a little more relationship understanding here I'm not sure what equals what so looks like we need ourselves a new theorem well okay so let's do that we'll come back after we figure out this theorem here's what would be neat now in particular it sort of looks to me like when you have tangents touching a circle, those look like they might just be the same length, right? Those, they might be congruent. Um, but let's, let's see if that's really true. So what I think what's going to happen is let's find this point of, t of t tangency here, right? See where it comes up here, right where it's, uh, it comes here. And then there's another one down here where it just touches the circle there now what, what i'm going to do is to prove that those are congruent let's let's actually put in a radius here right so let's get a radius going here's a radius and here's a radius and we're starting to see something that looks really symmetric symmetry often is a really powerful tool when we're trying to prove things that are going to be congruent uh, so in particular Notice radii are always going to be congruent, right? Same circle. So I'm just going to put, you know, indicate that those two are congruent. Not quite clear why that's congruent yet, but I have a clever idea. How about if I do this? I'm going to draw a segment from the center to where those tangents intersect. Okay. This is starting to look pretty cool. This looks like I could just fold this guy over and he is the same triangle. In fact, it turns out it is, right? Because what we can do is, think about this. Let's call these this congruent to itself. Remember way back when we had all those cool triangles, um, all the congruent statements? Um, so if that's true, we also happen to know that this, remember from our previous lesson, we know that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius where they touch. Oh my gosh, this is cool. This is a right triangle. We have a leg and a hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse is congruent to itself. So we had to do the old hypotenuse leg to tell us that these two triangles are congruent. Now, if those two tri triangles are congruent to each other, remember this mouthful before, congruent part of corresponding, no, I said that wrong, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? CPCTC, big mouthful. But basically what it means is that once you know those are congruent, any piece of it is congruent to each other. So look at this. Hey, this is congruent to that. Hey, awesome. That's exactly what we need, right? And in fact, we got a cool theorem for it. And here it is. Okay, so let's kind of break this down, and uh, in a second we're going to take some notes. But basically, let's summarize what the key point of this is. If we have this construction, okay, so I'm going to have you draw this in a second, but let's just summarize what's going on here. If we have this, now notice we got a little point here and here. If you know that A, B, and B, C are tangent, so let's start with our beginning of the statement. So if we know that A, B, line A, B, and B, C, if we know those two are, are tangent, right? If we know they're tangent to the circle. Now, I'm, you know, skipping a few words. I just kind of wanted to focus on the highlight. That implies that we've got congruent segments. A, B is congruent, right? A, B, the line segment is congruent to BC. Now, remember the last time we were talking about um, perpendicular tangents? You remember how that was a bi-directional arrow? Notice this is not a bi-directional arrow, right? This means if this first part is true, then 
the second part right if this is true then that but not necessarily the other way so don't don't get carried away and, and bring it around the other way right so you might have pairs of lines that that touch and are the same length but that doesn't imply they're congruent they they must be tangent lines they must be tangent lines for us to know that um, okay so now we've got something to work with we're gonna be able to do some really awesome things with that right so again this is congruent to that okay so let's now go back to our first problem so what we figured out is that wherever we have tangents coming to this circle we are going to have congruent segments okay well look this segment right here is congruent to this segment okay now what i'm going to do it helps me a bit i kind of can make these dots a little we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna show you in a minute why we're emphasizing those okay so look that's congruent to this okay well that's cool um gee if i only knew what that was well i don't but i do know this is 13. well if that's 13 then huh hey maybe if i knew this if i knew this i could subtract it and knew that yep so well i don't know what that is but you know if i knew what this was and you know what this gl is the same as that so that would get it to me but i don't know what that is but I do know, oh, look, I look at this guy way over here. I do know this guy. Oh, I know, I'm gonna take a few steps. All right, so let's make some steps here. I'm gonna start with this congruence over there, right? I've got six is this line segment, but also this one. Okay, now I see where it's all gonna to fall together, right? So if those two are congruent, I know what this is, right? Six and nine. So if this is six, that's nine. Then this guy right here, right? We've got to have this guy equal to three, don't I? Right? Well, if this guy's equal to three, then that's equal to three. Now, if this guy's three and notice that this is 13, then that tells me that this is 10. And finally, I come all the way back here and this is 10. Okay. All right. Whew. There was a lot going on there, right? But in the end, I got my answer, ij equals 10. Okay, ij equals 10. Let's think for a second as a strategy though, right? There's a lot going on there. Now. And now these are kind of fun. When you start to get these, you're gonna, you're gonna really start to enjoy them because it just all falls together. But I will tell you, there's a few things we gotta do to make it manageable. Notice that I've kind of worked my way both ways. Now, I also, if I look this way, notice I'm not getting anything. You know, it will before I knew it was a 10. So I kind of work my way back, back until I basically get to the point of, okay, now I have something I, I can work with. Um, so that's um, kind of the strategy. Well, let's, let's look at another one and start using that strategy. Okay. So um, here we go. Wait, my pages are getting stuck. All right. Let's look at a different one here where we have a... Um, a quadrilateral okay well let's actually do this so this first one I, I kind of cheated right I had a nice printout everything's good well I'm gonna tell you something you're not gonna have a printout right because you're probably doing this from a computer screen so what we want to do is I just want to take a minute or two and show you how to draw um, tangents for um, circumscribed uh, polygons like these okay so let's go back to this first one again okay and we'll just use this guy as an example the trick is what you what you want to do is start with the circle so start with the circle in the middle okay now we're not gonna get super picky about if it's a perfect perfect circle right I, okay but then what we do is we're gonna draw the tangents second now you can if you like you can grab yourself a ruler and do it this way right now when you draw those you're gonna make them longer than they need to so I'm just trying to sort of make it look like this right and yeah I can do this and I'll kind of do this and notice because I drew it long enough now I know it's gonna at least catch it right and so you can do the lines like that if you want but you know you don't really even have to if you don't want to uh, it depends how comfortable you are I often just do it freehand and but I will tell you the one thing that helps is it often helps to turn so that you have the natural flow of your hand your, your hand likes to go in one direction, sort of the pivot of your elbow. So I like to do this and I just kind of eyeball it and then I just kind of draw it across like that, okay? So I've got something that's pretty close to that. See how I did that? Now, if you want, you can erase the extra little pieces. 
Um, it does help to make dots here, right? And then now you've got somewhere you can write down your work, right? So when we had done this problem, I would have said, oh, six, six, three, three, ten, ten. Just now I wouldn't have written everything down, but just a way to keep track of things, okay? Now that's going to be really helpful for this next problem that we're doing. Because notice with this problem, it's a little more complicated. We're starting to get to the point where it's really nice to be, have a way to keep track of things. Okay, so again, let me show you what you will probably want to do on your paper. Because again, you're not going to have a nice printout like I have. So what I would do is if I'm looking at this problem, I'm going to say, well, okay, let me draw myself a circle, right? And you know, something like this. I will tell you, you know, I, I practice my circles every now and then, right? I just get a piece of scratch paper and I just shoot circles right do a whole bunch of circles one after another until i start to get better at it so you probably would benefit by that but again it doesn't have to be perfect but enough that you can keep track of things now i'm going to draw some lines here and again like i said it helps to kind of turn the paper so that it's naturally the way your hand wants to go so i'm doing this one and then here i'm going to have a line like this now notice i'm just just wanted to just sort of touch it doesn't have to be perfect just enough all i want is some way to keep track of the numbers somewhere to write it down all right, this, and then finally, I'm going to do this, All right? Kind of up to you whether you get rid of the extra pieces. I think I'll just kind of leave them to show you what happens if you don't bother. Okay, so now I've got somewhere at least to write things down. Put some dots to make it clear where the line's at. Okay, now let's come back and analyze this problem, okay? I'm trying to find FG. Now, FG is this one right here. Okay, this is what I want. Right? This is the question mark. That's what I don't know. Okay? Well, let's see. I could do this a couple ways. Um, now, trying to go this way, there's really no information there, right? So I can't go counterclockwise. I'm going to have to go from the other direction. So let me work my way back. If I knew this, I'd be really happy, right? Well, I don't, but I do know this, this length of 25. If only I knew this little distance here, right? Well, I don't, well, I can get it from here, right? So this will give me this, which will give me that, right? So in other words, the strategy I'm going to have is I kind of start here. I sort of look until I find what I need, and then I realize I'm gonna, it's going to work, and I'm going to loop back again, okay? So now let's do it. So this is what you'd actually be writing on your paper, is you'd say, okay, well, I'm going to start with this 18. So I've got an 18. i got an 18. I see that it's a 25. It's up to you whether you write the 25. I probably wouldn't bother, but... You could if you want. Um, you got a seven and you got a seven. Okay. So see what we've done there. Again, the, the whole idea is just a place to write some stuff down. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be fancy, you don't have to use a ruler, but it just helps a lot. Now I do want to point out how many things we didn't need. Notice I didn't need any of this 28, the 15. Some of these problems are gonna have more information than you need. So so don't feel you gotta use every every single number. All right. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Uh, now this one a little bit different because now we're looking for the whole perimeter. Notice the perimeter. That means I'm going all the way around. Okay. Well, let's start filling in some gaps here. Uh, here's a 17. So I know that I'm going to have to fill that in. And uh, and again, you know, on your paper, you'd probably have something that looks like this, right? Just just draw roughly. Give yourself a, a circle. It doesn't have to be incredible, right? Boom boom and boom right again we're not looking for perfection just somewhere to write down your numbers it really does help so i got 17 and now i know this is 17 here's an 11 that's got to be 11 here's a 14 here's a 14 right okay now here's the other thing you want to do have a starting point in this case i'm going to start at the top it just makes it easier if you have a starting point I personally, I usually start towards the upper left. So if you always do perimeters the same way, you'll get less confused in the future. So just have a starting point. I like the upper left, but whatever works for you. So here we go, 17 plus 14 plus 14 plus 11 plus 17 equals, is that right? Hmm, that seems funny. Um, that somehow looks funny to me. I don't know, but I'm just gonna say perimeter does it equal 73 somehow? That seems wrong. Here's why I'm thinking that's a little funny because 
I'm kind of looking at this, and if I 17 plus 14 plus 11, okay, 11, if I take one of each and then multiply times two, 11 plus 14 is 25. 25 plus 17 equals times two is 84. That's not the same as what I just got, is it? Okay, maybe I did something wrong. This is why I always double check. Okay, let me try that again. 17 plus 14 plus 14 plus 11 plus 11 plus 17. Okay, yeah, I'm getting 84 this time, right? Always double check. Don't assume you got it right the first time. Now let's think about another, right? Okay, let's think about it another way, right? 17 plus 17, 34. Plus 14 times 2 is 28. 28 plus 2 times 11 is 22. 22. Okay, I got 84 three different ways. I'm feeling much more confident now but because I did it several ways. Always try multiple ways. Okay, last one. You're probably going to get some that are a little trickier where you have to actually do some algebra. Again, just like we were doing before, we're going to figure out how we're going to work backwards. Okay, uh, just so we don't take too much time. I'm going to go ahead and use the figure here. But remember, you're going to want to sketch it and on your page. And use lots of scratch paper and make it big. If you do little stuff, it's really hard on these because you have to extend them. Okay, so let's think direction. If I went this way, there's just not enough information. See, I need a long one. So I'm probably going to have to come from this way, right? So let's see how far back I'd have to go, right? If this is C minus 4, right? If I knew this, I'd know that. Which means if I knew that, I could get that, but I don't know this. If I knew this, I could get that, but I don't know that. But I do know this. Okay, so I'm going to have to go all the way back here, I guess. All right. Um, and again, you can either do that or sometimes I just start filling in things until something starts to make sense. All right. So either way. So I've got 8 and 8. Now 18 minus 8 gives me a 10 here. And then I got a 10 here. And then let's see, 13 minus 10 gives me a 3. Oh, finally, I can give myself an equation here, right? I have C minus 4 equals 3. Okay, add a 4, add a 4, C equals 7, right? And wait, am I trying to find the length or C? Let's see, it wants C. Okay, good. So my answer here is C equals 7, just like that. Okay, and like I said, you can either try and plan it out or just start writing stuff down. Sometimes just write stuff down until something makes sense. That works too. All right, last thought, I just want to leave you with some vocabulary to make sure you got this straight. Um, the difference between circumscribed and inscribed. Circumscribed and inscribed. Okay, now, we're right now what we're talking about is circumscribed, and this was triangles, but polygons in general, right? Circumscribed is around the outside. So think of circumference as being around a circle, so it's around the outside. Inscribed means inside, right? Notice the circle is inscribed, the triangle is circumscribed. Here, on the other hand, the circle is circumscribed because it's on the outside. The triangle is inscribed. I mean, the easy one to remember is inscribed, right? In means in, right? So just remember which is which. Circumscribed means around, inscribed means in. Well, that's enough for today, and we'll see you next time.